It's really exciting to be in front of a bunch of uh, software architects, and hopefully you realize that uh, you and, and those of you who are also developers, uh, we're at one of the most interesting uh, moments, I would say, in, in terms of a wave of computing. Um, the demands that our uh, customers, our users place on us uh, are pretty extraordinary, and their expectations for uh, intuitiveness of our applications uh, continue to grow every day. Um, I've been on this cloud journey with, with IBM for uh, a number of years. Um, the cloud native uh, journey that you've heard so many people talk about this morning uh, is the beginning of a pretty uh, fantastic journey. And since we're in New York, I figure there's no better way to talk about a journey than to try to use something that looks like a subway map. Um, a lot of people you know, that we hear from, they come into this from a perspective of you know, a kind of clean slate. Right? I'm building a web scale company or an application born on the web. That's not what we all have. Right. Many of us come at this from a perspective of, I've got an existing business, uh, I've got an existing customer experience, and I need to figure out how to innovate and adapt and get to this new place. And whether you're coming at it from a perspective of you know, adopting some new practices or DevOps practices, refactoring your applications to be more cloud native, or maybe extending them to do something new, for the most part, the destination is, is scale, right? It is enabling the business you work for to achieve a new level of scale. Uh, now, for me, it's easy to think of this scale in terms of what, you know, weather.com and the experience we run. That's scale in the traditional sense. I have a lot of users. I have a lot of web page hits. I have 530 million plus weather reports every day, right? Um, it's a lot of data. It's a lot of scale. That's what a lot of us think about, like, oh, I've got to be able to scale the front end of my business. Absolutely true, right? That's one pressure. And a lot of what we've done in cloud native is really a architecture reaction to having to deliver that kind of scale. But I want to also make you think of one other aspect of scale. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you have uh, daughters or sons or nieces or nephews here. Um, and they have a kind of a different expectation for how things work. Um, they don't necessarily read the manuals that come with the software we build or the applications. In fact, they pick phones up and they expect them to work. It's always fun to watch a two-year-old with a phone and you realize they figured out how to do things on the phone that we in our lives haven't figured out how to do. What they expect now is in intuitive systems. And building an intuitive system on top of something that was maybe built 10, 20 years ago, that also drives scale. Right? That drives a new pressure on the application architecture. And when we look back at what Adrian and Nora were talking about this morning, a lot of that system testing, those new paths, those new modes of failure, those new pressures that we have to test for and push they're coming on some of exi our existing systems because we're introducing new experiences. And those new experiences are very, very compute intensive, right? So when we look at existing applications, and sometimes what we're talking about is we have to build a new cloud native front end. Why are we building that new front end? We're generally building it because we're trying to bring a new experience to our users, something hyperintuitive, something that interacts. If I ask somebody under 30, when they interact with a company, do they want to interact with a human when they hit the call center? The answer is actually, if I give them the alternative, they will tell me, I would rather interact with a chat bot. We didn't build these systems that way. And now what we have to figure out is as we move on this cloud native journey, what do we do? What do we pick? We can certainly take what we've done and go to kind of the right side of this and say, well, it's really easy to migrate bare metal cloud or VMs, I can just bring forward what I have. And for parts of the system, that's absolutely true. But if you want to do everything you heard about this morning and you want to be super flexible and super scalable, we actually have to go to the other side of this. We actually have to get opinionated about our programming model. Now, I'm sure everyone in this room probably has an opinion about programming language. Everybody has an opinion about programming language. 
I have an opinion about packaging, I have an opinion about configuration, and I have an opinion about deployment. You can probably pick in any one of these uh, environments the language of your choice, but what is truly tricky is getting to a point and understanding cloud native that it is an opinion about deployment. So when we look at containers, when we look at Cloud Foundry, and we look at things like functions, a lot of the opinion that's coming into the picture here and what we need to get used to is an opinion about deployment. So I'll leave you with one last thought. Those three boxes to the right, uh, and we can drill into the, this more this afternoon and the experts bar and a number of the sessions here today. I want people to walk away and say, you know what? I need to go back with an opinion about deployment. I need to go back with an opinion about cloud native because it is actually that opinion, those pre-existing configuration and deployment patterns that get you on this cloud native journey and start to enable you to scale. So this is my quick intro. I really appreciate your time this morning. Uh, it's awesome to be part of this powerhouse lineup of speakers. And uh, with that, I thank you for your attention and hope to talk to you more this afternoon about those uh, three options for very opinionated cloud native deployment. Thank you.